Okay guys, um, here's another one for you guys today. This is a 97 Toyota 4Runner and we're gonna be going after the back shocks on this. So we're gonna be replacing the two back shocks. This is the shocks that the customer chose to go uh, go with. It's the Durala shocks. I think they're from Napa, this, this one. Um, so click the bottom mount goes um, sideways through the rear axle and shut the top. Uh, looks like the top mount was vertical right into the frame. These are normally a pretty tough one to get to because you can't see the bolt, the nut that goes on the bolt part of the shock. So, yeah, I'll show you guys how we get to that one. Hardware comes with it. Some directions. Okay, so yeah, let's get our tools and get this job started. This is the setup we're using on the hair to get the shock out. Um, we got a 15 millimeter socket, deep socket, with a flex head ratchet. And we're using a chain, um, a chain lock wrench to hold the shock from turning. And yeah, so I'm just gonna get this done all right off. And then show you guys the next step. So we got the nut off the top one, and now we're gonna get this bottom one off. This one is gonna be a 70 millimeter socket. So I got the impact, the 17 millimeter socket, and I'm just gonna whack this bottom bolt off. There we go. Came right off. Bolt, washer. I'm gonna slide this bottom shock off. May need a pry bar for this. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a pry bar. I'm just gonna pry out on the bottom of this shock. There you go. It falls right out. So this is the old shock. So now let's go and compare it to the new one and get the new one ready for installation. So as you can see, the shock is the same, the length is the same. This older one seems to be a little more beefier, heavy duty, but it's the same exact thing. Just this one should be, I think it's going to be a little softer, right? Not as uh, stiff as this one. But yeah, let's put it in. Okay, so when you start the new shock, you're going to make sure all the hardware is all pre-assembled before you get in there in a tight spot. So as you can see, the bottom one, the bushing's already in. The other one fell off when it was, the old bushing from this one fell off when it was taken apart. But this new bushing is already pressed in, so that's good. The next step is going to be is we need to put in the washer. One of the rubber grommets that goes in the bottom. Then we're going to slide this through that mount on the top. We're going to put one more grommet on top of there. We're going to put the washer that caps it off, the crush washer that crushes the rubber grommet. And then we're going to put a knot. After we get it tight, we're gonna add a second knot, a double knot, so it locks into place, okay? So yeah, let's go in there and get this bugger installed. That's the shock tower mount up there where the shock slides into. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our shock. Right there, we're gonna take our shock. And we're gonna slide it into the hole. And then what we're gonna do is on the bottom here, Oh, hang on, we got one rubber. Take this back out. So as you can see down here, you wanna make sure all the rubber grommets and old pieces are off of the, the mount, the lower mount for the shock. Okay guys, so we're gonna install a new shock now. So we're gonna take the shock, we're gonna slide it up into the upper tower mount. As you can see right there. And then on the bottom here, we're just gonna slide it right onto its mount down here. Sometimes it can be a little tough because the rubber is fitted. Sometimes we get a little rubber mallet to hammer it in. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is gonna take this um, plastic mallet I'm gonna just hammer this bugger on the bottom. So 
So I was trying to put the shock on it and it's still giving me a hard time. So one of the trick you can use these rubber pieces is some, um, you know, um, any kind of um, lubricating gels, um, you know, KY jelly or any kind of lubricant jelly. Okay guys, so I got some lubricating jelly on top of the rubber part of this shock. And then I'm gonna go ahead again and put this end um, up in its mount right there. And then take the bottom end right here back to its lower mount. I'm gonna take the mallet and then I'll hammer it back up again. And there you go. As you can see, we're using a little bit of lubricating jelly. So, what I used was this, you know, cheap personal lubricant. And yeah, slides right on on the rubber pieces. It's kind of tough to go in. So, we're gonna get the, the bolt. The bolts are in here. Put it through the, the washer. Get it started by hand. And I'm gonna get the impact and tighten it up. Okay, so now I got the impact on the knot and it's gonna. Yeah, so I got the bottom bolt tight. I'm uh, just gonna torque it down and um, final tighten the bottom and then I'm gonna put a knot and tighten up the top. Okay guys, like I mentioned earlier, um, I gotta torque the bottom bolt down. So this is the torque specs for it. So if you look on the paper, the M14, cause it's a 14 millimeter bolt, uh, torque specs is 90 to 100 pounds. So I torqued it down to 100 pounds cause I like to make sure my stuff is all really tight. Okay guys, on the top, I'm going to take the rubber bushing. And then I'm going to take the, the washer. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside and I'm going to lower the jack just a little bit. So it'll squash the shock down a little bit to the bottom washer. So it'll make it easier to tighten the top. Okay guys, so as you can see, just by dropping a jack down a little bit, it squashes the bottom bushing. So it's going to make it really easy to tighten the top nut. So now I'm going to take the nut and place it on the top. Now I'm gonna get the ratchet and just tighten it up. Okay guys, so now I'm just doing the final tightening. Um, the ratchet, it's in a kind of tough spot, so. Right there, it's nice and tight. So I got them nice and tight now, so take it out. This is my setup I used. It was just a three H drive a uh, swivel head ratchet with a 14 millimeter socket on it uh, and yeah that's about it so yeah hope this video helped you guys um, uh, it's hard to film underneath the car so I hope I got all the shots um, good enough where you guys could see it and, and stuff but um, yeah I'm working on figuring out different ways of filming different areas so yeah i hope you guys all like this video and it helps you guys out so i'm gonna repeat the same process on the other side shock and 
get this car back to the customer so yes yeah, see you guys on the next one aloha